Alright, what's going on guys? Dr. Stephen James here to bring you another video. Today is my weekly review of this week's episode for The Walking Dead. It is called New Haunts. So before we get into this, spoiler warning if you're new and have not seen it. So uh, to start with, we have Daryl... RJ and Judith in what looks to be an abandoned house for scavenging at at first glance but then the logic then the logical part of your brain kicks in and realizes I don't think Daryl would have put RJ in that situation of course my brain didn't really get that far before I realized it was a haunted house and the walkers were actually actors. I mean, I, I kind of like the um, the whole setting they're doing. Honestly, this was a great episode. Honestly, especially for a especially for an intro episode, it was really good. So um, yeah. Anyway, uh, after the main title sequence rolls, we see Carol about to serve cookies. By the way, does this scene? remind you guys of anything because I swear it it looked familiar to me but I couldn't put my finger on it if you have any idea what it reminds me of let me know in the comments so anyway Carol noticing that Ezekiel is uh, still sick she um she steals the keys from the uh, janitor old habits die hard Sneaks into the uh, records office and finds that um and finds that the treatment it would the expenses of the treatment it would cost to save him are a bit too high and out of reach. Carol, you know, at, at first I didn't really know what she was doing. I mean, breaking. I mean, first breaking into a breaking into a records office and then sneaking into a wine cellar i'm like okay her snooping is getting out of hand but then i was like oh nope she just went outside the wall to um to get some uh some wine i mean yeah i i was just under the impression that she was uh still inside the community so you can understand i was a little weirded out by the fact that there were at least three walkers inside the wine cellar i'm like does the Commonwealth government know they're holding walkers in the wine cellar for some reason? But, nope. I guess not. Or actually, no, it must still be in the wall. I mean, what wine preserve... I mean, what winery is, you know, st still fully stocked anymore, you know? But, anyway, I digress. I Another beautiful moment, I thought, was, um, was when Ezekiel gives... Um, Ezra, you know, Jerry's son, uh, the leash of, um, Shiva. You know, I thought it was really cool. It's, it's really, uh, sweet that he kept that after all this time and that he, uh, gave it to the son of his right hand. Getting to Daryl and Rosita in their ghetto apartments, I was like, oof, this is their uh, ghetto apartments. You know, they're trying to work their way up. And, uh, Rosita said something said something that you know really amused me that it was a weird feeling worrying about money again they did a really great job looking at making it look like a modern city you'd almost forget that it's a zombie apocalypse show also not really that forgettable if that makes sense yeah it probably doesn't but daryl and rosita are going for training in uh in the commonwealth uh militia I mean, I, I would have gotten some shots, but there were just way too many clips that would have had to have been taken. And I figured it'd be easier to talk about it briefly. Mercer, the um, the Commonwealth leader, the Commonwealth militia leader, uh, he saved Daryl's partner, and Daryl's like, "What the hell was that? I had him." You know, basically Mercer was like, "He took too long." Yeah. By the way, I have to give the uh, the prop department parts on the costume. I saw. Talking Dead briefly on it and you know they did a great job making it making the costumes look like costumes but also 
a little primitive because, um, you know, because it's still an apocalypse and no one's really manufacturing plastic masks anymore. Kind of had a vintage modern vibe. It's weird, but I have to, like I said, I mean, the prop department would have, the costume department would have had to have gotten really creative for this episode, which I totally respect. So, uh, Milton. Yeah, he... Man, he is, uh, he's still a brat. Um, but honestly, before watching this episode, I saw episode 306 of On My Block, so... Um, I wasn't really phased by it this time because I already saw quite a bit of that in a previous, uh, show. Those who have seen that episode knows exactly what I'm talking about. If, uh, if you don't know, look it up. He was basically being trained and it looked like Milton was struggling, so, so Daryl shot the walker with a crossbow and... He uh, started to bitch about it, and his mother passes by with a, you know, marching, marching some troops. So I was, in, in that moment, I was thinking, oh, is he gonna run to mommy now? And sure enough, that's exactly what he does. <laughs> I'm like, wow. That was, and this uh, fancy party, man, by the way, it is really weird seeing, seeing Magna in a waitress getup. I mean, like, wait, come to think of it, didn't she say she had waitress experience? I could be mistaken, but in season nine, the second episode she appeared in, I think she said she was a, ra a waitress before she was in prison. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, um, yeah, I, at, at the time, I thought it was a little peculiar, you know, seeing her in a in the server industry because, I mean, she's such a free spirit. Uh, yeah, you know, parties like that, people are on, are always on the verge of snapping. You know, parties like that are really boring, you know, really sophisticated. It's full of people that are just underneath all that, um, superficial crap. They are just waiting to throttle each other, and sure enough, one of them steps, except it, except it wasn't a party guest, it was actually a server who, um, who Princess had previously, um, I mean, thanks to her, she, I mean, thanks to her, he pretty much got demoted to, uh, waiter, and even when he was a guard, apparently he was never, you know, recognized by, um, the Commonwealth government, and in a fit of rage, he took her assistant hostage and, you know, made his escape. When, when Daryl cornered him in the haunted house, it's like Mr. Ripley vibes. I mean, don't you agree? I mean, if you've seen that movie, honestly, probably most of my audience hasn't, because I was like four when that movie came out, and I've never seen it, but... I have seen a few brief clips and the white shirt and the suspenders with the uh, with the pair. I swear I got Mr. Ripley vibes the second time I watched it. <laughs> the way he's holding that knife at Daryl. Stay back. I uh, thought that was uh, pretty good. Of course, he was taken alive, said that... Um, he was taken alive and escorted by Milton. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name. I'm trying my best here. I'm not good with names. Honestly, I think he might have been called something else. I was like, well done, Milton. As if he was the one who could have uh, subdued a guy with a knife. <laughs> I wonder if he actually knows the truth or he was just uh, giving his son props because he's his son because he's her son. You know, he said that there was a, there was a revolution coming of, um, you know, people who, who wanted to be heard, and apparently there are others. And as we find out in the end, when Rosita sees his, uh, his stash of, um, propaganda, and the episode ends there, some of the characters, particularly the ones who were pretty much born into a dystopian world, 
has never heard of some things that we have heard in our childhood, like what an allowance is. Uh, this becomes apparent when Judith makes a new friend named May, and he offers her a, she offers her a record, and she says, I don't have any money. And May just totally uh, gave it to him, I mean, gave it to her as a treat. I thought that was really nice. Honestly, when they first met, I didn't really trust her. You know, like the uh, the big kid trying to uh, push, you know, trying to tease the new girl and lead her into a false sense of security. I mean, that's what I thought at first. Could she still be doing that? It's plausible. But, I mean, honestly, what would be the point? I mean, she bought her a record. Ezekiel also gave, um... Carol, uh, Henry's, uh, old memento box. I know I'm, I'm sure I missed if you, oh, uh, by the way, um, he, um, when, uh, when, when Miss, when Miss Milton, our, uh, President Milton, or Governor, whatever, yeah, she, um, she was wondering if he was, the waiter guy was telling the truth when, um, when he said that there were others, her secretary was like, not that we know of. And while well, I was saying one can never be too sure, like the second after I said that, she said, make sure. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, we're on the same uh, neural wavelength of thinking. I'm sure I missed a few things. I mean, I, I took photos of every key moment that I wanted to talk about. Well, mostly every one of them. What a great episode. Honestly, after this episode was over, since ever since it became an option, this is the closest I came to uh, getting a an AMC Plus subscription. But, you know, luckily for me, I can be as patient as I am cheap. So, I held back from any unnecessary uh, purchases. But anyway, uh, I think that's it. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, by the way, if I had to rank this episode, I'd give it an 11 out of 11. It was really that good. I mean, especially for the standards of an introduction episode. Whew, really good. But anyway, if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and I will see you in less than a week for a food review video or a, a restaurant re uh, guess that restaurant review video for my channel the very first ever as always talk to Stephen James say peace later guys see you soon